Hey folks, it's John with KidgyTropicals.com bringing you another episode of Tank Talk Q&A where we're answering your questions sent in to that email address right there. If you want to have a little bit more fun and to get your voice on the show, you can call the phone number down below and leave us a voicemail on our message line and we'll get you on the show that way. Got a few questions for you today coming from both angles, the email and the voicemail line. But before we get into that, I wanted to remind you real quick about our Amazon affiliate links at kgtropicals.com. If you're in the market for anything fish keeping related, if you head over to kgtropicals.com, you're going to find a button on the left hand side now that says aquarium supplies. This is going to lead you to links of all of my favorite products. You're going to get them at the best price. A lot of times you're going to get free shipping and we get a little bit of credit for that. It's a great way to help support the show, support us. If you're into what we're doing, but you're not necessarily into African cichlids, you can go on there to get your supplies. So thank you so much for that. Let's get on to the first question. Hey, John, it's uh, Jonathan Bernardo from your calling from your old stopping grounds in Woodbridge, Virginia. Um, I have a 110 gallon high tank with uh two pieces of holy rock decoration uh from universal rocks not the background but the uh the biggest piece that they offer and a smaller piece as an accent also but <clears throat> my question for you um i figured since you've been netting fish for as long as you have you might have some tips or tricks for me or for me but um being that as big as that piece is in my tank, it's really hard to net fish. And one particular instance, I had a red fin borlei that I was trying to net. But because of that big piece, it made it really hard, and I really couldn't take that piece out. I had to compress it just to put it in the tank because it's a center brace. <clears throat> in the okay, I'm not going to be rude here. I don't mean to cut off my friend from my old stomping ground, but his question was very, very long. And I don't want to, to, I didn't want to go through the whole thing. Folks, if you could just do me a favor and try to keep your messages a minute or less, that would be really good. I know some of your questions are a little bit complex and you might need a little bit more time than that, but let's try to speed things up. No offense, John, but I'm going to answer your question anyway. And that is, uh, question is about netting fish. What are some of the best ways to do that? Well, folks, this is one of the reasons why I don't have a lot of decor in my tanks. Uh, it's something that I talk about all the time. Now, this tank is a bit extreme because we just haven't put any decor in there yet. But this is why I like to do a background and maybe a rock or two, and that's it. And it's for this reason. Fish can be a real challenge to catch in a net, even if there's no decor at all. But when you start adding big things like rocks and holy rock pieces and stuff like that, they're automatically going to go hide behind that, and there's nothing that you can do, and you end up getting so frustrated because the fish just end up going in circles and circles and circles and circles running from your net. Now, there are a couple of tricks. The first one would be to take all of the stuff out. I know that's a hassle and you probably can't do that. I get it. But taking all of this stuff out to just get it out of the way while you catch the fish, that's a great way of doing it. Uh, plus you can clean it while you move it around, you know, you kill two birds with one stone. But another good way that I like to do it is you can kind of coax them by feeding the fish that might bring them out but then i also like to use two nets one in each hand i don't mess around with these little nets that are this big i go for the big 12 inches and i'll put one in each hand and i'll kind of surround the fish kind of back them into the corner and then just use one net to scoop them up i always do that if it's a particular troublemaker i will use two nets to kind of draw them in and uh, and go that way but when you have a lot of decor in the tank it's almost impossible because they are smarter than we think they are and they're gonna run off and hide and there's really nothing that you can do about that so uh, many many curse words have been shouted in my shop believe me and it's one of the most frustrating things that we ever deal with but the biggest piece of advice that i could give you is first of all get everything out of the way and second of all go slow I know it sounds ridiculous because these fish are lightning fast in the water, but go slow. Use two nets and just kind of creep up on them. You'd be surprised how easy that makes it. The next question comes from Adam Hill. It came to the email at kgqna at gmail.com. Uh, it's a question that I just added to the list of questions that we're doing today because I realized I had two that were the same, blah, blah, blah. But uh, Adam says, 
What would you say your favorite part of being in the fish business is? Being around fish all day, meeting new people in the industry. Thank you, Adam Hill from Illinois. Um, I'm answering this off the cuff because I don't have any preparation for this whatsoever. Uh, this is going to sound really cheesy and really sappy, but just understand I'm telling you this from the heart. This is what I love the most about it. This is what I'm having the most fun with. This is what I am most passionate about. That is creating online content for you. Not just you, Adam, but everybody. Um, I'm absolutely in love with this thing. I'm having a blast with the podcast. I love the new format that we're doing the videos with, that we're on a tight schedule, and it's hard to meet that schedule, but I'm doing it anyway. I love creating content for my website and for my YouTube channel and podcast. That's my favorite thing about this. Now you take all that stuff away and I absolutely do love the interaction with people in the shop. Sometimes, you know, I can be caught in the wrong mood, but for the most part, somebody walks in the door and there's no other customers in the store. It's just me and them. And they come in and say, I want to start a tank. Take me from the beginning. Love that. I mean, you can catch me, you know, you come in and ask me that 10 minutes before closing time, and that might be a problem. But I absolutely love taking somebody step by step through the process, starting them off and, and getting them going, and then getting to know those people through the upcoming months as they continue to come back and have more questions. I love it. I could talk fish all day long, which is probably why I love the online content so much. I absolutely love it. Um, I love every aspect of this business. So it's hard to really pick one, but if I could pick my, you know, the thing that I'm going to do, and that's all I'm going to do, I would be creating content for you every single day. I wouldn't be uploading it every day, but I would be creating content and building my online presence all day, every day, which I practically do that anyway, but I got to do everything else at the same time. But that's my favorite thing. Thank you, Adam, for asking that. Okay, so this next one, uh, I've got two questions, and they're both kind of along the same lines, so we're going to listen to two voicemails in a row. Hey, John. It's Alex, Texas. Uh, I had two questions for you. One question was, what kind of fish can I keep with uh, severins, like gold and, gold and um, I guess, gold and red? Also, my next clown loaches need to be before I can put them in my Embuna and Cichlid tank. Love the show. Keep up the good work. Later. Later. Okay, and here is the second one, kind of along the same lines, same kind of question. Hey, John. It's Tom from uh, Mount Minnesota. And I was thinking about setting up a 1FD Fantosa tank. And my question for you is, can I put clown loaches uh, in that tank, yes or no? Now, a lot of times, you know, I like those questions where it's just yes or no. And I think I have one of those coming up a little bit in the show. But um, this is one of those kind of wishy-washy things because there's a lot of people out there that would say, absolutely not. You cannot keep clown loaches or any type of loaches, for that matter, with African cichlids. But I happen to know a lot of people that have done it. They they come from Indonesia. I mean, most uh, loaches, if not all of them, I'm, I'm not a loach expert, but I'm pretty sure they all come from Asia. I'm going to recommend to you that you te check out Dustin's video. I'm going to put it right here. He just did it this last week on his Species Sunday. Great information on loaches on there. Um, no, I didn't use that video to prep for this answer, but but it's a great video. I watch his videos every Sunday. So uh, definitely check that out, get you some more information on them. But they're all pretty much from Asia. Uh, their water parameters, they can tolerate quite a bit of uh, differences, you know, from, from pretty high, a pretty high range of pH and things like that. I know people that have done it. I know people that have kept clown loaches with Africans and they've done it successfully. Um, but then again, I know a guy that keeps discus with Africans. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's right, but it definitely means that it has been done and you probably could do it too. Um, it would not be something that I personally would do. And for no reason other than I just, I don't know. It just doesn't seem right to me. It's kind of like throwing an Oscar in with a bunch of haps. You know, it's just something off about that. And for whatever reason, in my little brain that I have up here, loaches and African cichlids to me wouldn't mix. But that's just me. But I know people that have done it. And so you could too. Uh, how big do they need to be before you put them in? Big enough to where they can fend for themselves. I mean, if you're going to be putting them in with Mbunas, 
Um, clown loaches, they can get, and I don't know what kind of loaches you said. I don't think you gave any in particular. I think you might have just said loaches when you were asking about putting them within bunas, but, um, if they're clown loaches, you know, they can get six, seven inches. I mean, they can get pretty big. They might even be able to get bigger than that. Like I said, I'm not an expert, but I, I would definitely have them be close in size to your embunas because we all know embunas can be nasty and you want to make sure that they're not going to be ultra nasty to the loaches. Now, loaches do have interesting ways of defending themselves. I'm going to let you watch Dutch, Dustin's video to see that, but, uh, they also, they don't really have a whole lot of defense as far as scales and stuff like that goes. So you want to, you don't want to really put them in there with fish that are going to be aggressive, which is another reason why I'm not the biggest fan of including them with Africans, but it's been done. So go ahead and give it a try. Now you're the, the first gentleman asked about what he should put with Severums. Severums have kind of the same temperament as things like the blue Acara, the, um, angelfish. So I would keep them with fish like that. I wouldn't start mixing them up with the really nasty, aggressive, you know, managuenzi and wolffish and stuff. I wouldn't put them with things like that. I would keep them with the cichlids that are more on the nicer side. This next question comes from Nathan Round to the email. He says, to John, love your work. Coral sand, yes or no? Cheers. Love those kind of questions. If you're going with an African cichlid tank or any type of fish that appreciate hard, high pH, then the answer is yes. If you're going with community fish, you're going with Amazonian fish, you know, South and Central American cichlids and things like that, they like a soft water. I would not go with that. Again, I've talked about this in a million videos. If it was up to me, I would not have sand in my tanks just because it's a pain to keep clean. But that's just me. Love the look. Hate the maintenance. But as far as coral sand goes, you're talking about that being something that's going to buffer your water. So you definitely don't want to buff it in the opposite direction from what your fish need. So if you're keeping Africans, yes. If you're keeping other fish that require soft water, no. So I'm going to have some fun in every episode. I'm going to start going back to some of the old emails that I got way back in the day. I don't want these people to feel neglected. And this email came to me in February, February 8th to be exact. The email reads, hi, my name is Ryan Orkin. I hope you put this in your q and I have a little fish eating bigger fish's tails. What should I do? Hope this makes the cut to be in your Q&A. Get rid of the fish. That's it for the day, folks. Thank you. <laughs> no, I'll go into a, a little bit more detail. But that may be the outcome. You may end up needing to get rid of this fish because if he's a little fish picking on the big fish, that means he's got some big... And he's probably never going to really let go of that. So, you know, I, I don't know that I would keep a fish like that in the tank. If you've got a fish that's just out of control, you can try things like the timeout method. If you have a small tank running, stick him in there by himself. Put him in timeout for a month. And then when you put him back, he may have forgotten all about the pecking order. Somebody else may have taken charge of the tank, and then everything might be okay. That works pretty well, but doesn't work every single time. Give it a try. If it doesn't work, then you might have to take him back to the pet store or put him on Craigslist or, you know. But sometimes the timeout method works pretty well. I've actually had fish that have been in trouble and I've gone to net them and I've spent hours trying to catch them in my 240. And for whatever reason, me trying to catch them with the net kind of woke them up and they never bothered another fish. It's almost like they know that they're in trouble, but I'm not saying that's going to happen with your fish. But if you don't have a tank that you can try the timeout method, it might be time to let that fish go because you're really not going to take that attitude out of them. So that's it for today, folks. I want to thank Adam, Alex, Tom, Jonathan, Nathan, and Ryan for sending in these questions. It's been a lot of fun in this episode, trying to keep these episodes shorter. Don't forget about our Amazon affiliate links. Don't forget to support our sponsors, Universal Rocks, Dustin's Fish Tanks, CagerTropicals.com. Thank you all so much for watching this episode, and we'll see you next week.